So I don't really have a giant conglomeration of whips that I can parade out. Uh, I, I love that that's a thing that's happening. It is just so different from the experience that I have with knitting, which is fine. Everybody has a different experience with knitting, but strange. So I thought instead of showing you, not, well, I have one picture. I'm gonna drop in one picture of what not to do <laughs> when you have a whip that you're changing. It's not a great idea, but you know, it works or it might work. We'll find out. Uh, it, it could be a really bad idea. I think it'll be fine, but it could be a really bad idea. We'll find out when I block it. But other than that, um, I thought that actually what I wanted to talk about was knitting on a budget. Because I kind of have a lot, to say, a lot to say about knitting on a budget and how to do that. Because it's not so easy all the time. So I'm going to move the camera and we'll do one of those things because today I'm going to talk about... Ooh, I can't because they're all out of pile. I'm going to talk about tools. Which is not, as you might notice, <laughs> an expensive Chiaobu set. Uh, there are some Chiaobus in here, but uh, it was not the most cost-effective way to do it, so I did it differently. I did it in such a way that I got pretty much what I wanted for less money. Uh, so if that interests you, hold on while I move the camera and talk about how I did that. Right, so this is my kit. This is my gear. Um, this <laughs> lovely basting tool. Um, it is a basting tool, but this is how I wind my yarn, yeah? I got it because it has a fat bit in the middle and skinnier bits at the end. It's very smooth. There's nothing for it to catch on. Um, but because it's got the fat bit in the middle, I can just pop it off and it, uh, you know, this is smaller, so that's easier. Um, so yeah, that's how I wind yarn around my knees if I am traveling and I don't have a winder. This is my Notions kit, which just has your usual stuff. So um, this is very weird. I keep holding it up as though the camera were at a different angle, so apologize for that. Um, but there you go. we got to learn. This is darning needles. Yeah, and mostly what I... Kilt pin, because, you know, you, I don't know why I have a kilt pin in here. But, oh, because you know what? For when I'm reserving a small number of stitches, I actually use a kilt pin. It's too heavy for that, but I had one lying around, um, stitch ripper for the occasional sewing situation. And then mostly the rest of it is stoppers. I use, where are you? I need one that's got a good color so you can see it. I use the, they're like safety pins, but without the thing. I use those for stitch markers because they're ridiculously cheap. They're cheaper than buying uh, safety pins. So I have a whole bunch of those. I won't go through for a while. And this, by the way, uh, is a cork cut into quarters and half, which is what I use for needle stoppers on the rare occasion I use that. Things that I couldn't live without are end stoppers. And I'm not going to find one in here because it's like buried, but, oh, there we go. Cable connectors. Because when I want to try on a sweater, this is how I do it. I don't do waist yarn. I don't do anything like that. I connect two cables and I pull it out and it takes two seconds. And then I try it on, and then I pull the cable I don't want anymore back out, and I unconnect, disconnect that, and put the needle back on. So not much, you don't need much in the way of notions, I don't think. Um, but here's where the, the big savings comes in, right, is, is this. Because um, I don't know why I put a button on there. I shouldn't have. I like this side better. Um, but there you go. Anyway, this is my needle set, which is not a set, quite obviously. Um, and part of that was because when I started knitting, I didn't know what I was going to start knitting on. Yeah, somebody loaned me a pair of straight needles. Well, I started knitting again, right? I had, I'm like everybody else in the knitting world in that my grandmother taught me how to knit. And I stopped. I, I never really got into it when, I, when, it was, when she taught me. Um, I think probably because I was doing like potholders and that wasn't very exciting in like yellow acrylic, I believe was something that was involved, which was not, it wasn't my thing. Um, but then I at some point realized that I wanted to rechannel my grandmother and so I started knitting again. So I was borrowing things and I didn't know what I'd want. 
Um, and the smartest thing for me to do, because I mean, of, of course I wanted a Chiao Gu set. They're freaking beautiful. They're, they're want worthy, right? Of course you want one, but they're really expensive. And am I going to use it? I didn't know at the time. Was it going to stick? What? So um, this is what I did instead. This is where I keep all my cords. Yeah, they happily hang out. I tried sewing it in, but it, it annoyed me. So I, st I took it out. Um, I'm a terrible sewer. I'm, I'm really terrible at sewing, but I don't care because it does the job, right? Uh, and it makes me happy because I did make it. But also I got to choose, like I needed something that was a little bit padded for traveling. I didn't want uh, to break my needles when I traveled. Um, so this was a good solution. So somebody gave me early on this set of DPNs. They're Knit Picks or Knit Pro Carbons. I love these needles for DPNs. I have another set. I have a set that I have sometimes knit socks on. I think they're three millimeters, so US two point something, um, but they're three millimeters. And they're nice, but I like, and this is the same size, which is actually handy because then I can, I have lots of options. But um, for DPNs, I like them because when you are knitting small circumference, you have the slippery bit where you want it and then, but they're not going anywhere because the carbon is, is grippier by a, a large margin, um, but it also warms in your hand. So you kind of have the best of both worlds if you're a fan of DPNs. Do try these if you haven't, because they are really wonderful. Um, I don't like them for interchangeables. Don't know why. They, I, they're, they're not. The best of both worlds becomes not, becomes the worst of all worlds. Um, and I much prefer my licks for, for that. So I, I started with these and some straight needles uh, and, and sort of slowly bought, because I realized, I did the math, and I realized that Buying individual tips is not really any more expensive than buying a set of tips, except for the, the case, right? The Chiaogu case costs 30 quid all on its own, empty, which is whatever, it is what it is. Um, so if you don't mind not having a case, right away you have options. And when you're learning, you have the option of doing what I did, which was buy some Knit Pros and buy some Lucas and buy some Zings and some Chiao Gu's and try them out. Oh, and some more Chiao Gu's. And there's another set of Chiao Gu's that goes here, but they're in a project at the moment. Um, and try them out. What, because the, the way that you knit with, say, your Chiao Gu's is, or the experience you have knitting and the gauge you get knitting is completely different. These are, what size are these? These are US 3s. So this is a 3 on oh my... Where are my 3s? I have Lika short tips in 3s, but they're somewhere that isn't here. And I don't really know why, because I'm not... Oh, from the cuff of the sweater. Okay. Um, so the experience you have knitting on these is going to be very, very different than the experience you have knitting on these. And I like both of them for different reasons. They have different purposes to me. Um, so I am knitting the Superwash sweater, the Superwash Merino boxy sweater, and I'm knitting them on lookas, on my short tips, because I only have long tips in sevens and eights, um, because I am a flicker and I like the maneuverability of the short tips, and I only have to have one for both the body and the sleeves. Whereas if I have these, I still am gonna want these for the sleeves. So. Would I be happy with all of them? Would I knit the body on a big one? Maybe. Depends. For flat knitting, I kind of like this. For in the round, I kind of like this. Or depending on what my hands want. Um, but if I'm only going to buy one, I'm buying these. Because the cost effective, right? These are also cheaper. So these, I believe, were 5 to $6 a set. Um, ditto these. So I saved an awful lot of money straight off the bat. Right, this this entire thing cost me less than fifty dollars, I believe. I should probably check that before saying it, but I'm pretty sure because um, these are the most ex actually these are the most expensive tips. I think they were twelve or thirteen dollars. The Chiaogus were eleven dollars. Um, the Knit Pros are actually almost the same price as the looks, the Lucas likes, however you pronounce them. 
Uh, the zings were four dollars, I think. The Chiaogu shorty bamboo tips were also very inexpensive. Um, I don't like these though. God, I don't like these. Like, I really don't like these. But you never know when a project is going to come up. So I have the other Chiaogu bamboos, or yeah, Chiaogu bamboos, which I think are the twists. I have these in, in five inch tips that I use to make the linen silk sweater because nothing else would have worked. These were too slippery. These were way too slippery. Um, the fabric I was getting was terrible. These were also just that little bit too slippery. Not quite as slippery as the Chiaogu's, but still more slippery than the... No, the Lucas were more slippery than these, than the, obviously the bamboo. Um, and I got a beautiful fabric with this. So buying an assortment of things actually gives you an assortment of options because you're not likely to use the same yarn every time. And you might want some options. In fact, you can tell just sort of by looking that I tend to work with fingering weight yarn because all of my duplicates, well, these aren't duplicates, but most of my duplicates are fingering weight. Yeah, they're needles that I would use fingering weight. Num the needle I use most often is a size 4, US 4. Um, what millimeter is a US 4? 3.5? Yeah, 3.5 millimeters is the size I use most often. So if I want to use 3.5 millimeters, I've got one, two, I've got four different options in 3.5 millimeters. Yeah? Um, I'd like five. I think I want long tips in those two. But so anyway, the, 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 the long and short story is, is that yes, the sets are beautiful. You can absolutely buy yourself a set. It's a wonderful thing. You don't really have any options though. If you buy the five inch set, you gotta buy separate tips for in the round if you wanna do small circumference fitting. If you are using a different kind of yarn, you're gonna to have to buy other stuff. So your, your investment is already gonna be much more massive than if you simply have an idea of what your preferences are and or explore what your preferences might be by buying a bunch of different tips in sometimes the same size or maybe one size different, yeah? And going from there. I also have crochet hooks because this, I think this was my grandmother's. I'm not really sure where I got this, but this is an old, old, old boy zero crochet hook. This is my favorite tool in the world. I could not live without this tool. This I can live without. It, I actually, no matter what weight yard I'm using, I pretty much use this because I like the head and it's really easy to get in there without messing with the stitches around it. And I can size over the loop and or by guessing, just by eyeballing it, how much I need to pull out to get an even tension. And you can always mess with that later too, um, but it's never let me down. So for those of you not familiar with needle types, we'll just really quickly, these are knit pros or knit picks, depending on whether you are in the US or in Europe. Uh, I don't know if they have them in Japan. In Japan, what are they called? In Asia, do they have these? What are they called? I'd be curious. Um, they're fine, they're nice, they're warm wood, they're vaguely slippery, they're not these. Lukas are like knitting with butter. There's no better way to describe it, it's something that people say because that's what it feels like. Hard to explain, but very true. They're also just freaking beautiful. Yeah, the aesthetics of these are very pleasing. Um, they do lose their butteriness over time. I, but most of them don't. So far I've had the fives are the only ones, the fives are the only ones that I've, I don't know if that's an umber or an indigo, that could be an indigo. Um, the butteriness has not lasted on the fives. It's lasted on all the rest of them. And I don't knit that often on the fives occasionally, but not so often that the fours should have lost it first. Yeah, but they didn't. Um, so I don't know if that's just a bad batch or what, but they're like butter. The zings are kind of fun. I actually like these because they are metal, so they're nice and cool in the summer. Um, they're nice and slippery, but they're not nearly as slippery as these guys. These guys are like insanely slippery. The Chiaogus are beautifully insanely slippery. It's, it's bonkers. It just is. Um, which if you want to go fast and you're not really that concerned with anything um, is wonderful. I do enjoy these sometimes. Sometimes I find it's too fast. 
Yeah, uh, I just, I'm going and then I, half of my stitches drop off. Partly from technique, because I'm not used to them, uh, but partly because they are just insanely slippery. This is a nice balance. They're also less than half the price. Um, people do talk about the difference in the cords. Uh, these, by the way, the, the Chiaogu bamboos, these are 2.75s, I think. Yeah, they're US 2s, 2.75, so you can get interchangeable needles down to that. They are smoother, they're less grippy, they're, they're nicer to work with than your typical sort of big box store bamboo needles. I just don't like working with bamboo. It's, it's not something that I like unless I'm knitting with linen silk, in which case, thank God I have them in my collection. Um, the other thing people talk about is the cords. So here is a, the new Knit Pick Spin, which I got because they spin. So when you're doing things like trying on sweaters, instead of having a cord that's flinging around, um, you, you just, you know, spin, which is really convenient. Let's take a short one because it's easier. This is the Chiaogu. In fact, actually, I lie. We'll compare the two this way. Um, so, in terms of floppiness, this is obviously a lot more floppy. This is also spinning, so that's not fair. But this is a much floppier situation. This is has a metal cable core, so it's more stable. This is floppy, so it's floppy. This is just a piece of plastic. Um, which one you prefer is down to preference, yeah? This one is lighter, and it, it gets out of your way more. This one, I find, stays in my way a little bit more because it is it metal. It is not going anywhere. Um, so if I'm knitting on it, it's stiffer by, by a large margin. You might like that. You might not like that. The only way to know is to try, right? Um, Jiaogu does have spin tips, but with the fishing wire thing. Those, I think, are terrible. I love that they spin, but I think they're terrible. Um, I'm quite fond of these because they still are structured, but they're not as structured as this. They spin. So everything is always getting out of my way, which is nice. The, where's the, here's the short, the short version, the original Knit Picks slash Knit Pro slash Luka, um, plastic is a stiffer plastic. I, I prefer the new Mindful plastic. Uh, it's floppier. But that makes it easier to maneuver. And again, I flick, so I am I'm moving the needle a lot. It's like a little hinge in my hand. And so if I have more weight, that's harder, right? Uh, so for my style of knitting, these actually are the ones I tend to pull out of the bag. Unless I'm using chiaogus, in which case, you know, if I want the needles, I have to use the cables. So I do like them. For Magic Loop, this is interesting, because for Magic Loop, I had the easiest time with the Chiaogus for a long time until I started using the spins because of the spinny cable thing. So if you are someone who has a problem with laddering, then this could be something you might want to try because when you're, you know, like this, and it wants to, you know, when you have just fixed ones, it wants to pull apart. When you have the spinny ones, it just, it stays wherever you put it. Obviously you wouldn't do magic loop on something this small circumference, but it stays where you put it because your tips are spinning. Yeah? That being said, for a while when you first do it, it feels like your needle is out of control because your needle is in fact spinning as you work. Um, or, you know, things are spinning involved and it's weird. It's not bad, it's just, it's funny. It's weird, so. Um, and cords for me are a very worthy investment because then, you know, I have them. And I usually use two of these for arm stitches. Um, need at least one for the body. 
sometimes two for the body because if you have too many stitches on then it gets cumbersome yeah you want a, a bigger diameter so I do have a couple of those um, and you know I, I like having options and these are sometimes you can get them for a dollar uh, another thing to note when you are on a budget is if you're not in a rush wait for a sale you know I bought I would say half of my needles on sale and when I come into a sale, I decide, okay, are there any other needles that I want? Um, which helps me keep the price down a lot and gives me more money for yarn. So, I don't know. It's not a set. But, so what? You know, so what? It makes me happy. It looks pretty to me. I got the pouch, by the way, I got at Goodwill for 99 cents because um, it was woven and I liked the fabric. And so, and you can wash it, which is nice. It is obviously falling apart a little bit, but I don't care because I beat my stuff up anyway. Oh, and I have one project bag. This is my project bag. It's not very knitting specific, but I don't care because it's canvas. Uh, so it, things don't poke through or cause problems. Um, and other things don't get into and poke the project that is inside. Yeah, so knitting on a budget. And think about how much more money I had left over for yarn. Not a terrible thing. But I'm going to talk about yarn later because there's lots and lots of ways to save money on yarn. And how do you do that? I have thoughts. So, thanks for watching. See you later.